Hi everybody, my name is Luke Armstrong. I'm with F45 Training Head Office. And uh, thank you very much for, to those of you who viewed the last podcast we did with Lauren Hogan from F45 Shanghai. Uh, had an incredible response and uh, it prompted me to, to do another one. Um, obviously, it's been a really tumultuous week for anybody in the industry. In fact, anybody in business. I think it's fair to say um, we're all going through some, some challenges. Um, and what I'm trying to focus on are the positives and uh, speak to people who um, can share some, some really valuable advice about um, how we, we adapt to this new reality and, and set ourselves up for success. Um, there's of course no shortage of doom and gloom, but um, I'm trying to position everybody for, for success um, and, and reinforce that growth mindset that's going to help us get through this. Um, and so with that, uh, one of the, the emerging lights to come out of this is, uh, is from New York City, um, Christopher Teekle, who uh, owns and operates F45 Williamsburg in Brooklyn, um, has uh, gone through uh, most of what we're, we're going through at the moment, um, mandatory shutdowns, uh, um, stay-at-home orders, um, online workouts, and he's actually um, seen some real uh, successes throughout this process, which we're going to get into a little bit later. Um, but Chris, thanks very much, mate. How are you going over there in New York at the moment? It's a very challenging time, Luke. I won't lie to you, but um, yeah, we, we'll, we'll get through it. Um, you know, we've got we've got the support of F45. Um, we're we're a pretty strong family here in, in NYC, so um, you know we're all pulling together and we'll we'll work through it together. Awesome, awesome. Um, for the benefit of anybody that's not familiar with your story, do you want to just give us a very short uh, intro? Into yeah. Your story? Uh, Absolutely. Um, I was actually a CrossFitter until I discovered F45 and um, uh, my wife introduced me to F45 Port Melbourne. Um, shout out to Ramsey and Army. Um, um, run a fantastic studio, double studio. I think it was the world number one studio at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Fell in love with the studio. We training, was training there for about two to three years. We decided we believe in the brand. We decided to pretty much sell everything that we own. Um, go to New York City and open up a studio. In hindsight, we thought, what could possibly go wrong? But um, no, we've been blessed. Uh, we were, I think we were the second or third studio to open up in NYC. We were the first Australians to open up in New York City. Um, yeah, so it's been a um, pretty, pretty amazing journey. Awesome, awesome. Um, I was over there uh, just a couple of months ago, um, caught up with you guys, and it was, uh, yeah, absolutely uh, recognised that it's a very close-knit group. It's a, it's a real... Um, it's a, there's some strong foundations over there on the East coast, which, which is great to see. Um, obviously New York is now um, dominating news headlines um, this week. It's, it's being regarded as the epicenter of the, uh, of the pandemic there in the U S um, can you just give us a bit of a, a sort of a brief rundown about what the last couple of weeks has been like for you and the business? Yeah, absolutely. So on the 15th of March, which was Sunday, um, collectively with a couple of other studios, a um, bit of a shout out to Luke and Jeff and Dan from Flatiron. Um, we made a bit of a call that um, in the interest of our members and, and the interest of our coaches, um, we thought that was uh, ethically responsible to actually close our studio. Okay. So we made that call reluctantly. Um, on the 16th, which is the Monday, Governor Como came out and actually closed gyms, um, forced all gyms in New York City to close. Mm -hmm. um, at that stage, we still had access to the studio. Um, we didn't really know what was going to happen. Uh, and then on the Sunday, just gone at 8 o'clock, um, only essential uh, workers can actually be uh, at their place of employment. So we're, a, a, we're now no longer actually to be in our studio, which has made things very difficult. Um, you just got to get creative. So where we are right now, you can only leave your house for essential items, food, um, but you can certainly not go to your studio and, uh, and, and film videos and do things like that. So um, could you just talk briefly about like your, your thinking? How did your mindset um, evolve over the last couple of weeks as you yeah. sort of went into voluntary shutdown and then were told like it's mandatory. Um, you know, that, that's obviously, you know, potentially very, very toxic for a business like ours, which is, uh, you know, fundamentally about people um, being in, in close confines together. What, 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 how did your thinking evolve over the last week? So, so I think once, once they actually closed down, um, they made the, the gyms uh, mandatory closed, we, we instantly went to how can we actually capitalise on this? We've got an online, we've got a, a, an amazingly strong community with F45 Williamsburg. They're sitting at home. They can no longer go to the gym. 
what what can we do? What can we provide them? And this is before the uh, the eight week challenge app had been released, by the way. Mm. So we took the opportunity to film a couple of videos um, in studio because we still had access to that point in time that we could at least as a short stop um, provide our members with something. You know, the 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 two priorities has always been members and coaches. We want to retain that membership. We want to keep touching. And communication is key. Communication removes fear. Um, we were sending out communications to our coaches and we were sending out communication to our members. Guys, this is what we know. This is what we're doing. Um, sometimes we, we, there was nothing to say, but we were still reaching out to them and saying, guys, this is what we're doing. So unfortunately, the dynamics of what we had planned um, that that window shut very quickly because having have no longer having access to your studio means we no longer have access to equipment. So we, we were unable to um, continue to go down that path of filming videos. Having said that a number of um, New York studios were very, very proactive, got onto this very quickly, filmed a lot of content, a um, bit of a shout out to Port Chester, Dix Hills, those guys um fantastic work so yeah it's it's a moving target luke and it's been you need to be able to react and react quickly yeah i love that um you didn't spend a lot of time feeling sorry for yourself but you you accepted this new reality and and, and we're, we're thinking positively like how can we how can we uh, leverage this to, to our own advantage um so um on to sort of the state of play right now you talked about doing at home workout so it sounds as though you were you, you know, you, you started to define a plan that, that would serve your clients and your staff and protect the business. Um, when, when did you first go, go virtual? So, so we, going back a step, when we were for, forced to close the studio on the 15th, we were inundated with members wanting to continue to support us, even though we didn't have an online presence in place. So just for all those um, uh, studio owners out there, don't ever underestimate the strength of your community. We were inundated with, I'm going to happy to pay my membership. I know you're closed, but I want to support you guys. So first and foremost, right. um, it was amazing. The thing that um, was a bit of an unknown when we closed was we weren't sure how long um, we were going to be closed for. Mm -hmm. So we thought a short-term solution, get these videos in place. This is looking like it's going to be between uh, maybe two Two and two and a half months. So we were we were um, that, that short term solution um, we wasn't going to last. So we made a very quick decision to say. And if you, anyone that's watching this in, in New York will talk about the curve that Governor Como talks about reducing the curve. Mm. So we made a decision to to come up with a whole new membership approach straight away. So people aren't going to continue to pay full memberships for two, three weeks down the track if you're not, if you're not providing anything to them. Mm. So we said, look, let's pause your membership. We'll come up with a, with a purely online membership. It's a new membership. It's uh, substantially cheaper than the uh, ongoing membership, obviously. Uh, and we have been incredibly successful at that transition um, from people, from members being on full paid to now this new, we called it... Um, uh, quarantine. So you know, it's, it's, quarantine. I know it's how, quarantine. I know it quarantine sounds corny. Quarantine training. I know it's crazy, but um, so so there's a positive in this, and that is that members that they are sticky and they will follow you, and, and we have been blessed by our Williamsburg community, awesome. uh, and so we've transitioned from full part full pain into now uh, this quarantine membership. Mm -hmm. What do they get for that? They get not just Corey doing the workouts. We coach the Corey workouts. So you log in via Zoom and we can see you and we can see in your lounge room and we can see what you're doing. But our, one of our coaches will coach through Corey's workout. So, you know, it gives us an amazing opportunity to stay in contact with our members. You know, we finished the session last night at uh, 5.30 and the guys started, Maddie started playing the guitar. Amazing. So when we talk about online, I want to be really clear. It's online, but we are still coaching those sessions via Zoom. Mm. So that's our value proposition to our members. Um, we're not experts at this by any stretch of the imagination. And, and that there is not a guidebook that you can open to get you through this. You have to be creative. You have to work out a way to touch your members. We're, we're going to initiate things like um, cooking classes, 
is there any bands, any of our members that play guitar? Maybe on a Friday night, we all have a Zoom meeting. And, and so that's, that's where we're at. Great, great. Um, what, what, did you have any challenges in, in trying to get your coaches to engage in, in the remote training, given that they're so used to the, the sort of the traditional person-to-person format? It's, it's a difficult thing with coaches because obviously New York City is in lockdown um, and their health is our priority. Mm. So, and we wanted to continue to support them. How could we do that without them having to leave their own house? So where we are at this point in time, we're doing two online coaching sessions where our coaches are coaching that session remotely from their house. We want to support these guys. You know, they, they, we've got fantastic coaches. And so we're still providing them with a revenue stream because we're, they're getting paid to do these sessions at home. Our members are loving it because they're seeing our coaches and they, they know their names and all those types of things. So yeah, I think it, it's, it's very difficult to ask a coach to come to a studio. Well, we can't even go to the studio. So we've, that's what we've done. We've got the two sessions a day. We can increase that, that virtual coaching if we need to. It's mm. providing them with income. Mm. It's providing our members with contact with our coaches. Uh, and they're getting that. that so so just, just so we're really clear, you're doing the work in your lounge room. I'm like, hey, Luke, come on, mate. Get those knees up. Come on. Stop slacking off. Put the biscuit down, Luke. Put the biscuit down. Put the beer down if you're an Aussie. Yeah. So, so you've got that one-on-one and, and you can regress. Luke, I know you can do push-ups. Come on, let's push through this next 35 seconds. So, so it's, it, it, look, we're doing the best we can. Mm. but it seems to be working. And that's the message that I want to say to other owners out there that are scratching their heads, hoping that HQ are going to come up with some sort of silver bullet that doesn't exist. Guys, your members love you. Your coaches love you. Let's try and work out a way to put those both together and be positive because this situation in New York is not weeks, it's months. Mm. So um, anyone that wants to hit me up directly after this video, I'm more than happy to share my journey information with them not a problem thank you very much yeah that's, that's great i'll definitely link you in the in the uh, in the update um yeah i also really like that um the notion of of appealing to your members to support the business because i think as business owners and as you know as experts in the field it's it's often um it's unusual that we would appeal to the members to to help us but i i, I absolutely in in the conversation that i had with lot with um with Lauren uh, on the weekend, you know that was one of the things she said is that she she appealed to the membership to get behind and support the business um, yeah. because the business was going to make it through it and um and but but not without their support and and they were receptive. Um, you talked about Zoom uh, a second ago. For anyone that doesn't recognise that Zoom is an online um, video conferencing software, we're actually using Zoom right now. And um, I'm going to do a tutorial for any business owners that might get use on, on how to use Zoom and, uh, for the purpose of running a group workout. Um, but can you just talk about um, any other software or hardware that you've come to rely on at the moment to do the, the virtual at home? So just, just going back to the, the well, watch the, um, the YouTube clip that you did with Lauren. One, one thing that underpins um, reaching out to your members is communication. And I go, I'm not going to harp about this, but communication removes fear. So if you're a studio out there right now and you are closed, reach out to your members, send them an email. Hey guys, we're closed. Um, we're looking at working our way through this. Any ideas, suggestions? So communication, don't think that they have been forgotten. Mm. So, you know, we, I, I, I struggled to believe that our studio is closed and we are working harder now than we were when the studio was open, which I just blows my mind. People said, oh, you must be watching Netflix. Not at all. Communication with members is absolutely paramount, paramount. I didn't even know about Zoom until seven days ago. Um, Zoom is a fantastic uh, uh, package that allows you to connect meetings, those types of things. In fact, we're probably using it for our um, trainers moving forward. Instagram is still a very powerful tool. We've created a separate Instagram group for the, for the paying members. So just so we're very clear, if they have signed up for Quarantine F45 membership, only they have access to Corey's workout. Only they know when we're going to be posting the live streaming. So it's not just a free-for-all. You know, F45 has put an enormous amount of money in their proprietary workout, their software. So it's really ensure it's really important that the people that are supporting you know they're paying their membership, they're paying their money, that they are the only people um, that are accessing um, these workouts. And then from the Instagram, um, 
if you've got 10, 12 people on Zoom, you tag all those people that are there in the workouts, what are they going to do? They're going to share it. They're going to respond. Um, they're going to share it. And, and I'm pretty sure most studio owners have every uh, member's Instagram handle. So they do the workout. We can see them on screen. We tag them Instagram and they're going to populate that out. So our membership is in the quarantine is growing, which is crazy given awesome. um, in this situation. So, so, so your, your participation and, and, and the people involved is actually the audience is increasing at this time. Correct. We've, we've been managed and we're fortunate. And again, we've taken a lot of um, advice from a lot of great studio owners out there. And, and Angela, our network manager, is doing a fantastic job of having these regular calls together. Cat we take... Ange Salvetti. Yeah, and she's doing a good job, Ange. Just stay positive. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some fantastic owners out there doing some great things. And we take a little bit of that and we try and uh, overlay it with our members. Um, and and that, that's been, that's been um, working really well. We're not saying that we have it worked out, but our memberships are growing. We've managed to retain over 60% of our original, original members, uh, which um, for us, it's great. Um, we've still got some revenue coming in, um, but again, it's, we're not experts, but we, we, we're trying. That's, that's all that matters. Yeah, great. No, I applaud you. Absolutely. Um, during the sessions, just coming back to the micro a little bit, during the sessions, you're, so you were saying that your trainers will, will actually uh, attempt to correct technique. What are some of the other yep. modes of engagement? You said that they'll do shout outs to the, to the members and, uh, on Instagram. Um, they'll, they'll tag them. Will they tag them in, in any of the live sessions? So, so if you think about, um, for those that aren't familiar with Zoom, the, tr the trainer is looking at a screen and he's got 12 members that are doing Corey's workout. Now, most coaches know their members fairly well. So you can regress, progress, you can, you can, you can accommodate those movements for injuries, but all they are hearing is the coach, the voice that they are familiar with, coaching them through the workout like they would in the studio. Um, and so... Uh, my job as the owner is to see who's in that, uh, in that workout, um, then put a post together to tag those people in that workout. So we just want our coaches, as F45 makes it very clear, just coach. That's their job. We have the TVs. We, you, all you need to be is a coach. And so I'm letting them just do their job. Um, I'm always tagging them in the, in the Instagram, and we're hoping that that will ripple effect. We'll get members that have paused their accounts because they see no value, and having said that, there are members that have paused their account because they don't have a job mm. and they will never come back. Mm. So we've worked on, a, on the basis that there's probably 50% of members that are paused that, will, that potentially will come back. But there's 50% of members that, that don't have a job. Even if it was the, the greatest workout in the world, they can't physically afford to come back. Mm. So um, it, it, it's, I've done the workouts. I was coached through the workout and it makes you work harder. You know, you've got, you've got a coach screaming at going, come on, um, I want you to hit 16 burpees in that 35 minutes. So it's, 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 it sounds surreal, but it works. Do you find that um, as, a, as an online coach, you have to be like more communicative than you would otherwise be in a sort of person-to-person -person environment? What's the most important thing about being a coach with F45 Williamsburg? No names. So the names are there. Come on, Tanya. Come on, Luke. Come on, Roger. It's very, very engaging. Mm -hmm. um, our head trainer, um, Dan Lawrence, did a um, bit of a shout out, did a, a session last night. He saw the, there was guitar in the background after the workout finished. Hey, Matty, why don't you play us a couple of tunes? Bang, bang, bang. You know, we, 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 we're adapting. <laughs> it's like we're, you know, we, we're used to being in a studio. We're used to seeing this face-to-face -face contact. We have to work harder at coaches and, and, and that applies to being online. Um, F45 is one of the best workout programs in the world. Um, let's get the best coaches in the world to complement that. And our guys do a fantastic job. Um, it, it, people just wanted to hang around for 15 minutes after the workout and just chat. They'd like, you know, one of our members' mums jumped in, you know. And, and so, you know, it's, who, who knows where this is going to go, Luke. But we're, yeah. we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. No, no, that's great. Um, so away from the virtual classes, are there any other ways that you're, um, supporting your, your clients? I think, um, you, you mentioned something about doing some cross promotion with other businesses in the area, even like virtual drinks on a Friday night, quarant yep. quarantinis, quarantinis, quarantinis. <laughs> quarantinis. So 
We've got a psychologist uh, live on Thursday evening talking about um, anxiety, stress. One of our members, reach out to your members. She's happy to do a free online class about dealing with being locked up in your apartment. We've got our dietitian who we use on a consulting base, uh, basis with talking about food. In this, in this, in this uh, time, it's really important to keep that food, uh, the quality food coming through. We were, we were complementing Corey's workouts with a yoga session, with a stretch session. So we've reached out to our members and said, hey, you got a skill? Is there something that we can do to complement? So think, guys, value add. The coaching the Corey sessions with a coach is great, but what else can you do? Do you have any musicians that want to do a live 30-minute Zoom? Um, you know, is someone a yoga t teacher that's happy to take your members to a 20-minute yoga studio, a uh, yoga workout? Be creative. We have been inundated with, with people wanting to support the community. I've been able to negotiate some deals with suppliers, discount um, uh, supplements, discounted clothing to support the people that are supporting us along the way. So just because the studio is closed doesn't mean you just sort of bury your head in the sand and go, oh, well, shit, you know, wait for head office to send me, you know, send me through the link to everything's going to be better. We have to continue to look at ways to keep our community together, retain memberships for, first and foremost, guys, and then retain your coaches. Try and keep an income coming through the door. If you focus on those two things, everything else will look after itself. Okay, well, that's a great segue into into sort of the business side of, of this now, um, which I wanted to get into. So, um, working capital at this time is obviously really, really precious. Um, what what were the some what were some of the actions you've you've taken to to preserve that? Um, obviously. Uh, head office uh, F45 looking at, um, um, I hope I'm not speaking out of school here, pausing um, the no, membership, the, the, the fees, which I think yep. has been an enormous help. Uh, Mind Body have jumped on board and they are suspending all um, uh, owed monthly figures as well. You obviously reach out to your landlord, you tell them what's going on. Um, again, underpinning all these decisions are communication. Just mm -hmm. tell them where you are at. There is absolutely no way we'll be able to pay rent this month. Mm. Not a chance. But he knows that because I've told him. So managing your clients, managing your coaches, and managing the people or your stakeholders in your business. And as long as you underpin that with communication, and I know I've said it before, communication will remove fear, guys. Mm. Tell them you can't pay rent. It won't come as a surprise when they're like, where's the rent check? It's Everyone is in this together. So that's how I've been managing um, People might be managing it differently, but I, I'm, I'm happy to say, guys, I can't pay you this month. Mm. Um, our coaches are our priority. So while we have this uh, reduced membership, we are trying to keep them employed. We are trying to continue to put money in their bank accounts. Mm. Yeah, Rightly think, wrong. You no, know, I think it's the right, absolutely right thing. I think, you know, the message from governments has been, look, you know, don't, don't lay staff off. Um, you know, clearly, the, the, the messaging they've been giving to central banks is get interest rates low, you know, put loans and, and uh, emergency packages together for small business in the hope that they can just keep um, em employment uh, at, at, you know, reasonable levels. I think the last thing uh, governments want to see is, is, you know, the masses unemployed. Um, have you just, just, just on that point, Luke, people will come, people will probably look at me and they go, what the hell is wrong with you? We are paying our coaches more money per class to coach an online session than they were getting paid in studio. Awesome. That's great. So, I'm you sure know, people, owners sure. out there will be like going, what the hell? Trust me, guys. Um, it's worth it. Mm. Um, in terms of revenues, uh, have, you, have you diversified yet into any other re revenue streams to sort of supplement any loss in, in income that you've seen from the traditional business? No, but what we are doing is using a daily cash flow. Um, I'm an accountant by trade before I got into the fitness world. Um, now is the time to be looking at your daily expenses. Mm -hmm. um, while you are not operating, um, there are certain expenses that just are no longer applicable. You know, towel dry cleaning, um, your wages bill is probably half. Mm -hmm. So be on top of those um, and, and, and manage the cash flows that you, that you do know that you have got. So I'm using a daily cash flow in conjunction with my body to really keep a handle on that. Um, it's fantastic to see the revenues continue to grow. 
Um, we're going to lose members. I accept that as well. But I think focusing on the on the inputs and out and the expenses you've got at this point in time is really really important. Have you identified any new opportunities to support the community and and you know potentially looking forward create create other new revenue streams? I mean, have you looked at meals, for instance, or 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 any other any other services that you might be able to provide? Are you considering anything at the moment? I I have to be brutally honest. We are so busy just retaining memberships and i mean that sincerely we are um working an enormous amount of hours on you think about the the just the administration of actually pausing you know all your members and then reselling them this new membership um so at the moment we i'm, I'm looking probably sunburned because we're on the roof of our building filming another uh, a weights workout um today that we can live stream on on thursday but again it's romans so we're at Panthers, sorry, we're staying on brand. Even, mm. even though we're getting creative with our online stuff, um, we are um, continuing to stay on brand, continue to promote the business. Guys, we're, we're one family, we're in this together. On the positive, this is a pandemic like the world has never seen. We will get through this. And any studio owner out there right now that is like going, shit, I'm struggling to pay rent, this is going to be like a January on steroids, guys. You are going to have membership sales off the freaking charts because we're sitting at home, we can't go to gyms, we're eating bad food, we're watching Netflix. So we will get through this. And when we get through this, you will see a spike in, in, in memberships, the likes that you have never seen and you will never see again. So that's coming. And that's the positive out of all this, Luke. So... I'm not looking for other revenue streams right now. I'm looking to position myself. Mm. But when this studio reopens, your next eight-week challenge, guys, it's, it is, it is Go going to be nuts. Yeah. So retain your staff. <clears throat> Keep your members active. Keep your members engaged in the studio because when those doors reopen, if it's one, two, three, six months, trust me, we are going to be in for a hell of a ride in those next six months. Yeah, no, it's a point well made. Um, is there anything that you're grateful for right now? Is there anything that's caused you to sort of pause and, and, and show appreciation um, um, for this situation? My wife, <laughs> who has helped me. It's, it's, life is a lot easier when you've got that's someone tough. to bounce off. Um, yeah, she's, Tara is, has been amazing. Look, it's, um, we've got a great brand. We've got a great community. Um, we are blessed uh, in this area, at least, by having some fantastic owners um, other studio owners that we can reach out to. And guys, don't, if you don't ask, you don't get. So reach out to someone. And again, I'm more than happy for anyone to contact me directly after this. So I'm grateful that I'm healthy. That's it, first and foremost. I'm grateful that I'm supported by an amazing wife. I've got a, we've got a really great network of F45 other studio owners that have been so supportive and just doing a great job. But the onus is on us, guys. No one's going to work, work, this through for you um i hope that someone takes something out of this youtube clip and applies it to their membership base because it just might be the difference to, to retain a member or to, to to spark someone to come back to your studio um, i'm not saying we're doing it right i'm not saying we're doing it the best but we're doing something and that's that that's what i'm trying to hopefully someone will take away from this yeah, no, all power to you, mate. Um, last question. What's the first thing that you plan to do once this lockdown is lifted? Start training again. <laughs> it's been, I, I, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, I honestly didn't think we, we were meant to be, what is it now? It's, um, I was meant to be in the Bahamas in a week's time for my wife's birthday. So that's gone. Mm. Um, the crazy thing is, while we're working so hard, once we actually open the doors again, it's just going to be the same, same. So, uh, honestly, I'm looking forward to a holiday. Um, but that, that isn't even front of mind right now. We, we'll, we'll get through this day by day. It's a moving target in NYC. It literally, um, for those, any Australian studios that are um, watching this, it's coming, guys. The only reason that New York is where it is right now is it, because it was the, um, the first city um, to experience this dilemma. So um, it's going to hit LA, it's going to hit California, it's going to hit Melbourne, it's going to hit Sydney. Um, so, you know, I hope that you start thinking about these things. Maybe start shooting some videos. Um, 
you know, think about um, for those that do Technique Tuesdays, you know, while you're open, maybe film 10 of them, maybe film 20 of them. You've got, you've got a couple of videos in your, in your top pocket that you can populate if your studios are closed. And I, I believe the gyms are closed in Australia as of today. Yeah, as of Monday, Monday noon. Yeah. As of Monday noon. So, you know, um, it, it's tough, but be, be creative. Um, we just filmed a, a, a workout on the rooftop our, of our building. We're using backpacks with weights. We're using, um, you know, cans for, for flies, for dumbbells. It, um, yeah, just, just get creative, guys. But again, please, please, please feel free to hit me up with any suggestions. Um, if you need any help, I'm, I'm, I'm here. We're, we're, we're one big family. Awesome. Mate, thank you so much. Um, you're in our thoughts and prayers and uh, it's really inspirational to uh, hear that message of, of optimism and hope and action. Um, and I'll be checking in uh, for anybody that wants to contact uh, Christopher directly. I'll, I'll link his, uh, his details below. And um, yeah, mate, best of luck. And thanks for uh, sharing your time at this time. Anytime, Luke. Always a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you soon, mate. Look forward to having a beer in, uh, in New York and Brooklyn shortly. <laughs> soon, please. Great. All right, Luke. Speak to you soon. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye.